Today, I will start with the story of three thieves. The first thief was a person called Emmanuel Ninger. He is mentioned in Wikipedia as Jim the Pen Man. This was the year 1892. A respectable gentleman in his 70s, along with his wife, walked into a small store in New Jersey. After purchasing fruits and vegetables, when he was checking out and gave a $20 bill to the lady clerk, when she touched it, the paint came off the note. She was astonished. Is this a fake note? But this person is very respectable and he has been coming here since the last 20 years. Nevertheless, on a hunch, she reported to the police. The police had been aware of somebody who with great expertise and skill had been painting notes. They didn't know who it was because when the note would go into circulation, nobody would realize it. It was that accurate. So they had given him the name Jim the Pen Man. They obtained a search warrant and entered his home. There they discovered three notes were work in progress. He used to get bond paper from the US Treasury, purchase it, dip it in coffee to make it transparent, place it on top of an actual note over a glass piece with light below. He would then trace it and fill colors in it with a camel hair brush. He was so expert that people would not know. Finally, if the note would be discovered, art collectors were willing to buy it for $5,000. $20 of those days is in any case worth $5,000 of today. Over the space of 20 years, he painted hundreds of notes. He started off with $20, went on to $100. Finally, he was caught and sentenced to jail, six years imprisonment. He was sometimes called the Robin Hood thief because his stealing never hurt anybody. In fact, if somebody found the note later on, they could earn a whole lot of money from it. But in your opinion, whom do you think he was stealing from the most? I would say he was stealing from himself. God had blessed him with such talent and ability. He was shortchanging himself. If he had gone on to do real paintings, they would have sold for $5,000. It used to take him a week to make that note. Instead, he was painting $20 bills. What a pity! He was such a thief who was stealing from himself. The second story is of another thief who operated during the Roaring Twenties in the New York Tri-State region. He was called the Gentleman Thief. He used to steal from the highest strata of society. To have a 
theft in your house by this person his name was Arthur Barry was considered a status symbol you know yesterday Arthur Barry stole from my house so it's a mixture of good and bad feelings his modus operandi was like this he would gate crash into a party and then he would pay a visit upstairs to find out the map above and leave a window open later the other side of midnight he would pay a visit he continued to steal at the rate of $750,000 a year for 10 years at a stretch but he was once discovered and shot at he received three wounds in his arm and finally he was put in jail miraculously he escaped from the jail and he went to live incognito somewhere but a lady discovered him that Arthur Barry is here and he was then sent back to jail where he spent 18 years Finally, when his term was over and he was now a free man, he went to live in the New England region around Boston. He did not announce his original identity. But because he was so well known, finally the news got around that the great gentleman thief Arthur Barry is in our midst. He was not now doing anything illegal. Correspondents descended to interview him. One question they often asked was, Whom did you steal from the most? He said, The people I was stealing from were also thieves. I would steal worth $300,000. They would report a theft to the insurance of $800,000. Such dishonesty and lack of integrity. However, he said, the person I stole from the most was myself. God blessed me with a fine intellect with dexterity of the muscular skeletal system with which I could have done so much those God-given talents I misutilize them in such a shameless way now let us come to the third thief this third thief is none other than yourself and myself whom are we stealing from from our own selves God has blessed us with infinite potential if we are not manifesting and utilizing that potential in a constructive and meaningful way to make a difference in ours and others lives we are stealing from God it may not be a theft in the eyes of the law but it is a theft nevertheless but we don't need to remain like this if we can understand the wisdom implement it in our lives we will find that we will slowly grow to our infinite potential then when we look at our face in the mirror we will be looking into the eyes of an ex-thief <laughs>